it's six o'clock and here is the official good evening now, or the afternoon I guess. And welcome to uh, Tech 5173 class, uh, section number one, right? You are number 001. And today we are fortunate to have uh, a guest speaker, my friend uh, Dick Martin. And uh, he's coming here to talk to us uh, for a few minutes, not because he is my friend only, but because, he, because, but because he is, in my opinion, a man of understanding. Uh, I enjoy talking with him, listening to him, and each time I sit with him, I am enriched. So uh, my wish for each one of you to become a man of understanding and a woman of understanding. Remember when we defined this class, when we started global technology, I told you we will not spend time talking about the latest gadgets and computers and what technology can do, although we do this. But this will be a tool uh, for the, the purpose of, of making our minds more open, more uh, broadened, more human. That's why we call global not the globe, but in the name it says global means people, the people. And the people are you and me. So we will talk about us, we think about us, and uh, we will become uh, on the top of, 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 um, of what? When we think. Just put whatever top of what? When we think. Thinking what makes us human beings. And you remember the statistics I shared with you that 90% of the people don't think, unfortunately. They just follow whatever it is there. You can go to McDonald's, they say, give me number seven. Number two, they don't think about what's in there at all. I mean, and 90% of the 10% who think, you remember, they think wrong. So very few people in the world think and think right. Want the proof? Hear the news? Look at what people are doing with each other. They're killing each other and uh, wasting lives and wasting their own time. So. If you leave this class a man of understanding, or a woman of understanding, we achieve the goal of this class. And my dear friend is coming today to share his worldview with us. He is a financial advisor, and uh, maybe I'm not sure if he'll talk about money, because that's why he works, or he has been working, and uh, maybe he will touch on whatever he likes in the money uh, field. Maybe you can ask him if you like. Uh, how nations would work with money and how technology would work with money. Whenever you have a question about money, ask him. But he is here to share with us something much deeper than that. Would you please join with me in thanking him for coming? Well, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Nice to see all of you here for a night class. Good turnout for 6 o'clock at night. I'm very flattered with the introduction. I don't think I deserve it. Um, I don't think I have any more, perhaps, understanding than, than anybody else. But in the profession that I'm in, it requires thinking things through in business. And as far as uh, what I do, I've retired just recently from First Mid Illinois Bank and Trust as a financial advisor. I've been there for about 18 years. When you deal with people's money, with their finances, and of course, you have to reason with them on the, the not just the value of a particular product or service that you're rendering, but is it going to, you know, how does it work? Is it going to benefit them in, in the long run? How, how is it that they can uh, understand how it works so that they can be engaged in the process of deciding financial um, a program? But what we're going to do this evening, um, the, the class is global technology, and I mentioned to the class this afternoon and when it comes to technology, I don't know much about it. I call tech support when I have a problem. And so what we really kind of want to talk about um, is how we can utilize information in our lives. Um, for example, what Dr. Wabi mentioned was we talk about uh, understanding. When we think about whatever the subject might be, you know, there's, there's the knowledge element. You come, to, you come to Eastern, you gain knowledge in a particular field, perhaps that you want to work in as a career. But the knowledge alone is not going to enable you to make a good career out of it. In other words, you have to take that knowledge and then you have to learn 
you know, you have to use understanding. In other words, you, you have to discern that the facts, the knowledge, and how it interrelates with other knowledge of that area. And then the most important thing is the application of it. The application is wisdom. So you have knowledge, you have understanding, you have discernment, which interrelate. And then the application is wisdom. So in your case, you take in the knowledge here, you, you assimilate it, and you think, how can I use this in my field of endeavor? And so when you do that, then you're applying with the, no the knowledge that you learn. Now that having been said, we want to kind of relate the application of the knowledge, the wisdom, in talking about success. That's really the subject that we're going to be discussing this evening not the finite points of, of financial advising or, or of stocks, bonds, or mutual funds or things like that, but something that you can use no matter what field of endeavor you are in. And that is, and, and that is success. In other words, what is true success? That's what we want to kind of talk about a little bit. This is what we're going to think about as we go through this. Now, what could be worse than Failure. Can you think of that? What, first of all, what could be worse than failure? Anybody have an answer to that? What could be worse than failure? What? Okay. That, that's a, that's, that's a, in what? Yeah, that's, that's very true. That's very true. But let's think about this when we think about what could be worse than failure. How about false success? What is false success? You know, when you fail at an endeavor, okay, if you fail at an endeavor, you can pick yourself up and you can try again. You can learn from that failure and try to make improvement in the future. In other words, do a better job the next time. But with false success, that's different because under the influence of false success, you can think you're winning when in fact you're actually losing. By the time you see the need to change, it might be too late. Consider this as an example. Ask yourself, what good would it be for a person to attain the whole world, that is materially, economically, fame, fortune, just to lose your life in the process? Would that be of much value if in the, in the attainment of that, you ended up with an early death? Not really, would it? The thought could well apply to those who devote themselves to the pursuit of money and all it can buy. That's kind of the epitome of false success. Now, let me preface it. We need money. Money is important. We're not trying to say that there's anything wrong with having money. It's the love of money that can create the problem, not the money itself, the love of money that can create a lot of different issues. And so just having a lot of money, for example, would be false success. Okay, the thought could well apply those, and, and like I said, apply that to where they put all their efforts into achieving that. Now, a, a uh, counselor, his name is Tom Denham. He's a career counselor. And he says this, and I want to quote. He says, thinking only in terms of the next major promotion, that is, making more money or acquiring more stuff, fails to feed the soul. And he goes on to say that simply measuring success in monetary terms is shallow and will leave you empty in the long term. Makes a lot of sense. Now, in fact, Many people would agree with that because in a survey that was done in the United States, having a lot of money came in 20th on a list of 22 contributors to having a successful life. What came in towards the top? Good health, good relationships, and a job that you love. Now, if, if you were to ask people, even if we were to ask you, can you distinguish between true and false success? A lot of people could probably academically answer that question, you know, when they're asked, but it's more challenging to make decisions that reflect 
the proper view of success. So it's one thing to mentally know it, and it's another thing to be able to apply it. Here again, it's the thought of taking in knowledge and to use that knowledge to generate wisdom or make right, good decisions. And that's true whether it be for our career or whether it be day-by-day -day decision. It's, it's very important that we analyze, we think about things, we think about what ifs. And so it's no different with, with success. Now, the sheets that we passed out to you, there's two pages. On the bottom half of the first page, we'd like you to take that out right now. And we're going to do just a little hypothetical scenario here. There's four people there, Santaj, Tim, Anusha, and Rachel. OK, here's what we want you to do. Take about 30 seconds and just take a look at that. And who would you say is truly successful? Now, it could be just one, or it could be two or three or all four of them. So just take about 30 seconds in each one and just, just ask, just put yes or no after each name and why. Just a brief little explanation. And when you're done, just look up so I'll know you're done, and then we'll move on. So just go ahead and do that on your piece of paper there. Who's truly successful and why out of those four individuals? You're not graded on this, by the way. <laughs> Very cheating looking on the back of the second page. <laughs> like most are done if you want to go ahead and finish while we're talking here that'll be be fine but now we'll, we'll talk about how to actually achieve true success it's one thing to have that ideal if you will but it's another thing to be able to achieve it a proper view of success does not teach that success is only attainable just by a just by a few people and the same by the same token it doesn't endorse the storybook saying that, you know, if you just follow your dreams and everything's going to work out just fine, that's just uh, not really valid either, because oftentimes that will lead to disappointment. The fact is, real success can be attained by anyone. Anyone here in this room, anyone can attain real success, but it requires effort. Well, how do we do that? Well, here are some principles that we can utilize to help us attain real success. Four principles. Now there could be others, but these are four very valid principles. One is a lover of silver will never be satisfied with silver, nor a lover of wealth with income. Now what that means is that a materialistic lifestyle will never guarantee satisfaction. In fact, it tends to be just the opposite. In the book Generation Me, by Dr. Jean M. Quinge, she said, and I quote, people whose primary motivations are financial are much more likely to be anxious and depressed than people who value strong relationships with others. She adds, research consistently finds that money cannot buy happiness. After you reach a subsistence level, income is not significantly related to life satisfaction. 
end quote. So the point is then that we want to set a goal that's more rewarding than just wealth and possessions because every sort of, we need a guard against the uh, having too much greed because when we have a lot of greed then our life does not result in what we possess. So all that is is again accumulating more stuff but it doesn't provide any real satisfaction. And again, we aren't trying to say money's not important. Again, we're looking at what is important here. That's the, what we want to take out of it. And now another principle is pride is before crash and a haughty spirit before stumbling. So ambition and conceit will not enable you to find true success. The book Good, Great, uh, Good to Great notes that company leaders who have achieved long-term success, and I quote, you can see that there, says, display a compelling modesty are self-effacing and understated. In contrast, though, two-thirds of the comparison companies had leaders with gargantuan personal egos that contributed to the demise or continued mediocrity of the company. So then, we don't want to think too much of ourselves then, because that's apt to lead to failure rather than success. So what can we do? Instead of seeking prestige, we cultivate modesty, knowing our limitations, being humble about it. And so if anyone thinks more than what he should think, he's deceiving himself. And someone else said that. That's not a good indicator of success. So there's another one. There's nothing better for a man than to find enjoyment in his hard work. So if you develop a strong work ethic, working hard is, is a good thing. If you enjoy your work, working hard at it. In the book, Teach Your Children Well, Dr. Madeline Levine writes, part of feeling successful at something is being good at it, most of being good, I'm sorry, good at it, and most of being good at something has to do with effort and persistence. And so then, when we have setbacks, and we're always going to have setbacks, then we also need to be resilient, be able to bounce back from a setback. In other words, pick ourselves back up, start over, and keep going here. So hard work is a, is a good thing. Now what you can do, work hard at becoming more proficient, and do not give up when faced with obstacles. And here's something, too, that's important that I've seen over the years, is when, when you folks end up marrying and have children, you know, it's better to help your children at an early age to instill those same kind of a work ethic and those, those values because if you tend to come to their aid every time they get in trouble or if they, you know, try to help them out or bail them out, you might say, then they're not going to grow up being responsible adults. They're just going to be dependent on someone else. So, you know, they, they will enable them to acquire good training for adulthood when they develop resilience too, meaning being able to solve some of their problems along the way. And another principle is a live dog is better than a dead lion. And think about that, what does that mean? Well, if you're a hard worker, then that should be a part of your life, but not your whole life. So your work is important. It should be a very important part of your life, but not the end-all, be-all, not the whole life. How successful would you feel if at the end of your profession, what the top of your profession, when you're, as the saying goes, when you're at the top of your game, you lose your health and the respect of your family because you were a workaholic. So the key is balance. Keep your balance with your work, health, and family life. That's being successful, not being overbalanced. And most things are a balance is, is important. So take care of yourself, get proper rest, and don't become a, a workaholic, and then that way you'd be sacrificing your family, friends, your health, but all those things that you would try to achieve by being a workaholic really is striving for full success. All right, now let's go back to the, the little uh, quiz there that you took, and let's Take a look at the front page of that. Now, if you if you indicated yes there, if you said that Tim and Rachel or all four individuals were successful, you might be measuring success by results only. 
regardless of the means by which you would attain those, those results. On the other hand, if you chose only Santosh and Anusha, you probably measure success by a person's character traits and work ethic. That's good. It makes sense to do that. So, in other words, consider this. Which is better for Anusha's long-term welfare? That she gets the highest grades in her class or that she continues to enjoy a love of learning throughout her life? I think that's pretty obvious. Which is better for Santosh's children? That they have everything money can buy or that they have a father? That they have his attention, his love, and he spends time with his family? So the bottom line of all this is that false success is based on image. True success is based on proper values. Now a question was asked this afternoon, but is that not a good thing to have an image, have a good image? Yes, it is. And in other words, to kind of explain the difference here, we want to develop a good image. We want to be pleased with ourselves. We should. We don't want to think more of ourselves than necessary, but we do want to have a good self-opinion. And what we want to do here is when, when we, we think about our image, we don't want to have an image that the world might think of success, all the material things, the power, the glory, the fame, okay? because again, that, that's really not what's important. It's important to have a good image, but make that image based on good values, good proper values. And then if your self-image is based on that, you will be pleased with yourself, you'll be satisfied with your life, and it, it, it will just work out better. So what, what kind of questions does anyone have? Let's just take a, a few brief moments. Um, if, if you do have any questions, I'd be happy to try to address them. Am I successful? How was I su By implying these very things. Personally, I'm not one of the wealthier people in town. I'm comfortable. But I have had a good track record, in, in my opinion, what other people have said and think. Um, I've tried to treat people as I would like to be treated myself. One of the things that I'm very proud of, um, might not mean much to you, but um, in my career, uh, which has been over 45 years in the insurance and financial services business, I have never had a complaint filed against me. Now, to me, that's something that's, important, that's more important than accumulating a whole lot of toys and stuff. I'm comfortable, but I'm not wealthy, but I didn't try to be because what I try to do is treat other people like I would be treated. I try to explain to them the products that I offer. I try to offer the products that are best suited for their particular needs. And so in that regard, I think I would have been successful. In other words, I have tried, though not perfectly, but I have tried to follow these principles here, which is why I wanted to share those with you, because I think they are life values that we all can use no matter what our field of endeavor is. Good question. Any other questions? Yes, absolutely. And that's because if you have the love of money, then you're apt to do things that are wrong or, you know, outside the boundaries of either the law or uh, dealing fairly with one another, with other people, in order to attain that. Because, as we kind of alluded to it, people that have a love for wealth, that's what they live for. And, and they do, oftentimes, they'll compromise their standards in order to continue to attain that and to, and, and to hold on to that. That's Poor people can have a love of money also. 
you can have, you, you, in other words, it's not just wealthy that have a love of money. A poor person could have a love of money. Well, for example, look at all the people that are that can't afford to buy lottery tickets. You know, because they think, oh, if I could just win, and I'd be wealthy. You know, and so they'll spend money that may be needed for family groceries and things, and buy lottery tickets, and with the idea of trying to obtain some windfall of money. But you can have the love of money no matter what your station in life. Would you agree with that? Right? Yeah? That's money is a tool, just like a, any anything. Just like you're a carpenter, you got a hammer, you got a saw or a chisel, or whatever. Those are tools of your trade. Well, money is a tool. We have to have money. We have to pay our bills. We have to have things. We just don't need to get to where it's the end-all, be-all you know, of, of things. Yes? I apologize, but I, I'm hard of hearing. That's up to you. Each each person. I'm sorry. Okay, should he, if I got this right, you're asking, should you change your current view of success in order to more, to, to conform a little bit more than what we talked about? Is that what you're saying? That's good. Well, my, my, my thought on that would be, you know, we, we can or I can espouse what we've talked about based on what other writers or other experts in the field, what I personally believe. You have to make that decision yourself. You have to analyze it. You have to think it through. You need to reflect. And, and that's part of the reason you come to college, to get an education, and it, to help you think. It's like we mentioned at the beginning. So this is something that you can think about in relationship to your predetermined ideas. So I'm not here to tell anyone here they've got to do it this way, obviously. I, that's not my job. But we're here to present information to help you to think about it in order to decide what you think is right for you. Okay? Does that make sense? 
In other words, I can't, I can't say, no, you got to do this. You need to look at it in light of, you know, your, your, your values. But your values, we can all have values, but that doesn't mean they're the right values. That's why we need to analyze our values. We need to think about those. And so one person say, well, I think it's okay to steal. Well, is that a proper value? I think all of us would agree that's not, that's not a value. So, you know, there's, there's some things that are, that are a little bit more personal feelings and other things that are a little bit more, definitely we wouldn't want to do this. And yet, you have to kind of come to that conclusion and maybe more research on the subject of, of how have people been, you know, that, that have adopted what we're talking about here. We know, Dr. Wabi and myself, share similar thoughts and we know that these principles are, are valid and that they will, will enable a person to have a successful happy life with family relationship with others business and whatever you know as far as how you adapt that to you know your in your country's beliefs on things you you have to make that decision right is that okay Say, um, I want to bring, uh, this is a very important point and very deep uh, thought. So I'll follow up on what said, I mean said, and remember the, um, the group of people who were running to, remember this video clip, where they are running to jump into a big hole, remember that, without thinking? We saw it and showed it in the first class. This is exactly what said, I mean, is touching on. Everybody is saying, saying something, whatever this something is, definition of success. Should I follow with them and just be with the crowd, or I can have that? And I may add also, in a river, and the stream is going this direction, dead fish go with the flow, go with the current. Dead fish will go with the current, do you agree? Only live fish turn around and swim against the tide or to the right or to the left, according to whatever the fish sees. Did I say something? Is this what you asked that? Very good. Now we go to Nigeria. I'll take this so I can get your voice here. Nigeria. Asia and Africa. Um, actually, I really don't have a substantial question. Okay, hello. Can you hear me now, sir? Okay, I said um, I really don't have a substantial question for you because I am of the same opinion with what you just presented this evening. No question. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm of the same opinion with you because, you know, I believe when you attach your joy or whatever to money, you probably won't be satisfied because money is endless. You, you, even when you get to billions, you still want to have trillions. So, if money is the factor that keeps you going, you will never come to an end. But um, if you attack it to goals like satisfying your customers, making your family happy, you know, as soon as you see that joy in them, you know you've achieved something. But in the case of money, you always have to keep working for it. So, that's, I'm just saying this to support. Yes. This, Yes, so I really don't have a question. And I may build up on this or follow up on this uh, by saying that today, I think, or yesterday, Bill Gates was named the richest man in the world, I think, and his worth, net worth became 167 billion with a B, billion dollars. So a billion is 100, 1,000 1, million, right? So he is 167 billion dollars worth. So if you can buy him or sell him, you get some money. It was just in the news today. Some of you may be interested in this. Michael Jordan, we all know who Michael Jordan is. He just was, a, was a, it was just announced by Forbes magazine that he's attained the billionaire status. He's one of 513 billionaires in the United States. <laughs> I thought there might be some sports people here that might want to know about that. <laughs> Excellent. Now we're going to. Is he any happier than anybody else? I don't think so. He's 
he enjoys a lot of material things. Is he any happier than somebody else? Probably got more problems. Now, is there anybody who knows the term diminished return? Is this term that finances uh, diminished return? Economic. I yes. It's a term of economics, you know, that I don't know that I can define it well, but somebody, you all have had economics. Have you had economics here? What do you think the law of diminishing returns is? Who hears the term diminishing returns for the first time? Is it about First time to write it in your report and listen to what you say and search it. Don't believe us. And put it under the section in your report. New return, new, new definition. Diminishing return or diminishing? Diminishing, the law of diminishing returns. The law of diminishing returns. I, I don't. I can't put it in the terms of an economic textbook, but the gist of it is, if once you hit a certain point of production, it's generally involved. He's agreeing with me, with production that once you hit a certain level, then your de returns for the effort starts to diminish per unit or something. I think it would not put the per unit. So, so in other words, you get to the point where you're not efficient because you're, you're producing less, or maybe it costs more. I'm not explaining this well, I'm sure. But diminishing returns means you hit a certain point where you're, it's beyond the ideal. You're now getting less return for whatever it is than if you'd have stopped before. Something like now, that. I'll give an example, and you correct me. If there is a dry uh, sponge, you know the sponge? and you drip a point, a, a drop on it, it will suck it, right? Or swallow it or something. Now, if you put it into a touch in the, in the ocean, it will get more, 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 until a point of saturation, after which the sponge cannot take more. So even if you immerse it in the ocean, the whole ocean doesn't take more than it can bear. Is that that's, something? That's so, I mean, does this make sense? I don't think that's one that would have been used in an economic textbook, but I think that's a good example. <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, let's, I mean, Bill Gates, if he has one dollar, he can bring a dollar menu from McDonald's. If he got three, four, three, four dollars, he can big back. So he can get for his money something. And now if he got $167 billion, he can still get the Big Mac, the same price. What he's going to do with the rest? I mean, another Big Mac. Third big, so four Big Macs, and he cannot eat more, right? He can sleep at night in one bed. He cannot sleep in two beds, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> now, let us go to India or America. <laughs> Where is India or America? India? India? Ravel? India? Here, here's India. Okay, if a person wants to become a CEO of a, any company, but he, li he hence his life uh, becoming an employee in the company, is he successful but his ha family and everyone is uh, happy? Is, he, is the person successful? If, the man, if a man has dreams to become the CEO of a company, his ambition, but he ends up just a secretary with a wife and family and he is happy and they are happy like secretary and that not the CEO. Is he successful or still he has to have ambition? He's successful. That would be my thought. Now does that mean he shouldn't continue to try to do better? Maybe. That depends. If he if he if if it's gonna involve working nights, working a lot a lot more and taking time away from his family to achieve that goal i would say that's not valid that's that's then then you're becoming a workaholic in order to achieve the status that would come with that position and more money my thought is if he has a good life he has good health he has a good family he's able to take he's comfortable he has subsistence uh substantial income for that then that, should, that to me is what success is. He doesn't need to be more. Do you know the term workaholic? If you hear the term workaholic for the first time, wave at me. If you hear it for the first time. 
if you don't know the meaning of being workaholic, with it, if you don't know the meaning, okay, can you explain what workaholic means? Well, we know what an alcoholic is, right? That's someone who drinks more than they should to the point of excess. A workaholic would be similar. Pardon me? Drink water? No, I mean, oh, I mean, I didn't define. Drink alcoholic beverages to excess, an alcoholic. Okay. But a workaholic then is, is similar in that they work more than necessary. In other words, they're overworking. They're working too much. Their whole life revolves around work. So that's just an expression that would be, you know, comparable to an alcoholic, but somebody who just their whole life is involved with their work. Let us land in the United States of America. What do we have? Um, do you think success is limited? And if so, what's beyond that? And uh, before, before I try to answer that, what would you say, how would you say limited? How would you define what is limited? It still goes, it still goes back, yeah, it still goes back to what is success. And it's not attaining more and more or bigger and better and more and more stuff, no, no, you know, more toys. But if that person has, has achieved a measure of, what, what, of, of need that they are able to take care of their needs and some of their wants and they're comfortable but they have these other values, then, then if I'm understanding you correctly, then that's fine just to stop at that point they don't necessarily what's the purpose in keeping to push 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 for more so in other words I would say in my opinion and for what I understand and what I've read and what I've we talked about here once you get to a certain level why you don't necessarily need to continue to push for more now does that mean you don't continue to learn you don't can does that mean you stop your your life no no, no. A person always needs to continue to try to improve as far as their um, ability to, to think, to reason, to, to the relationships with people. Um, it, we can always improve in our life. Um, we can always improve our um, in how we interact, things like that. But we're, talking about primarily as financial things here and and so if we just keep trying to move greater and greater you will keep wanting to make more money and buy more stuff to do what's going to be the result we're going to have to work more we're going to end up spending more time thinking about it a lot of people that are wealthy they spend more time thinking about how to keep from losing their money than they do thinking about how they can enjoy what they have and that creates a lot of other problems including health. So I don't know if I've directly answered your question. Can you achieve a level where you, you don't need to keep pushing? Well, if it's pushing for money or, or position, then I would say yes. But if, it's, if you don't just want your life to stagnate and to not continue to grow spiritually or, or in just learning, you know, that can continue on as long as we're alive. I mean, if you have goals to uh, help uh, five poor families, help them, so you can help them, but you can have ambition to go after finish this, there's no limit, you go to another five or ten, so, but if, I, like uh, um, Dick Martin said, if it's just to acquire more money, then you must put some, uh, some limits. Uh, my father gave... <laughs> Oh, I'll just come real, real quickly. I didn't mean to interrupt here. But this, that person who you were talking about uh, that, that's achieved a level of, of economic you know, comfort and family and everything else, then they might be thinking, what can I do for humanity? A little bit more for, for helping, helping others. Y yeah, exactly. But take, taking our, utilizing what we've learned, our energies, our resources, and helping others. That's, a, that's another that's a good way of growing. I was going to tell a story that my father told me when I was young. 
<clears throat> and still remember it. I'm not sure if it's a true story or uh, somebody wrote it uh, from s s Russia uh, in the time of C Caesars or whatever. Czars, yes, before, maybe 100 years ago, when before the communists came and so forth. And my dad said that the, the big czar, the Caesar of our, uh, he said today is the good day for our country and I'm going to give a chance to anybody to own any property in the land in front of you by a simple thing. You go and go around uh, each, each piece of land that you like to own it and I'll give you the deed at, uh, before sunset. So by the sunrise, uh, this groups, I mean individuals will go and walk around any property they like in, in the area and they claim it for themselves and they come and, and get the deed or the property for themselves at the end. And, but they must arrive back to the Caesar on the platform before sunset. So the story goes like uh, this young man who was strong and good and he went and said, I like this piece of land, I like this building, I like this villa, I like that. And he was young and good and strong. So he went around everything, hey, hey, and everybody would cheer for him. And uh, there's no end for that, you know, because uh, I like this, I like that. And he did a wonderful job. And uh, after he finished everything, he ran to go to the Caesar to get the deed for all this property. And everybody shouted, he is the richest man in Russia. But the point is, he got a heart attack when he reached. So he dropped dead after all the effort that he did. So, so he died the richest person in Russia. You get the wisdom of the, of the story. Well, that's all I have. And probably ought to let you get on with the rest of your class. I... Uh, any other questions? We have uh, open time, uh, if you like, and uh, questions or something. So if you are happy and satisfied, please give a warm thank you.